First into the tank tonight is Ed. He's hoping to scoop up a shark with his cool and healthy product. I absolutely love all the bad foods in life, like just like everyone. I was always trying to find little ways to sneak in anything that was bad for you, basically. So I was delighted to solve that problem, and I'm really excited to share that with everyone now. Hi, my name is Ed O'Donoghue. I'm the creator and owner of FroPro Ice Cream. In a nutshell, FroPro is the world's healthiest ice cream, and it's delicious. FroPro is 96% sugar-free, high protein, and low in calories. We make FroPro with 100% beautiful, fresh Australian milk. We add absolutely no sugar whatsoever. Later in the year, FroPro will be the first ice cream ever to achieve and display the five-star health rating, which is something we're extremely proud of. We have actually started from very humble beginnings. We were only in a handful of local independent stores. Um, February this year, we've ranged into 600 Woolworths major yeah, supermarkets right. uh, cool. nationally. Excellent. And we're now in just under 1,000 stores Australia-wide. Um, we aim to continue to grow. We have a great vision for FroPro Ice Cream to become the next great Australian food company. I'm here today to offer a partnership in FroPro Ice Cream for $250,000 investment for 10% equity and all the deliciously healthy ice cream you can eat. <laughs> so, Ed, that's $250,000 for 10%, so you're valuing your business at $2.5 million. Correct. Great. Let's taste it. Great. See, all Steve's whinging. Well done, Ed. I like getting mine first. Gone to buddy Steve first. Chocolate. What flavour am I getting? Oh, mint, if you mint. like. Mint. Cool. I like it. Very good. Peppermint oil. It's like moosey. Mm. Amazing taste. What did you get? Salted caramel. Beautiful. Mm. Tastes great. Ed, you're a big bloke. You've been sort of looking after yourself over the years, haven't you? Um, I actually was a professional rugby player for um, oh, really? 13 years. Which team? Played uh, about half my career for the Queensland Reds. There you go. Yeah. Hey. There you go. So I was very proud of that. And then I played the other half of my career overseas in England and Ireland. Taught me a lot. I was taught me everything, I suppose. But they don't necessarily teach you how to run a business on a rugby field. Tell us how you've transitioned to now being a business owner. Basically, I, I love ice cream, and I just knew I couldn't keep you know, knocking back uh, a couple of scoops every night or whatever. So I bought the Rolls Royce of ice cream makers, like this Cuisinart sort of machine with a compressor and just got going and actually got there pretty quickly. Tell me, on a scale of naughtiness, where number one is a carrot or a celery stick, and number 10 for naughtiness as a food is probably a cheesecake or a chocolate cake, yep. where does this sit? Look, I'd put it at three, four healthiness. So beside yoghurt, better or worse for you? Look, I think we're right in that, yo in that Greek yoghurt market. So it's sweetened with stevia, is it? Yeah, we use an organic stevia, yep. um, but then we use another two other natural sweeteners. We always found with stevia, because we've, we've tried to work it, that gets that little it's aftertaste. It's So what, we, are, we use a very, like a small amount. Right, okay. How long have you been in a thousand stores? So this is, so February this year. So Feb, Feb 18. Feb 18. Yeah, great. Yep. We went from 300 stores to 600 stores and our sales are trending towards where we, we need to be. All right, well, get us excited about the next couple of years then. Yes, so uh, on these sales, so basically because we've just gone into these 600 stores, yep. in the next financial year, 18, 19, I believe we should do 2.1 million, and our net is going to increase to 16%. So net 16% yep. is after all salaries, all production costs, all freight, all On what street. we do currently. The uh, percentage of your sales in Woolworths, so, so you've got one client there, how much of them is your business? Look, it'll be in the 80% now. So look, it's high. Yep. So labelling, who did your label? So the colour schemes and things like that? Yeah, yeah I, I suppose myself. Yep. yep, it's not very good. <laughs> you don't like it, no? Personally, no. We are trying to stand out in the freezer. So being black was a big thing. It was getting a bit of pop against the black. It's sort of, it's there's so yeah, much right, happening. Yeah. Less is more. So what's your target market? Who's your target market? Uh, our target market is obviously millennials um, and then above, also anybody health conscious. Anyone health conscious isn't your target market. You need to find a target market. Yeah, sure. And that's, and that's actually a fundamental flaw. 
It's not a fundamental flaw because it's changeable. The fundamental flaw is the fact that no one actually eats his no, ice cream. No, the fundamental flaw is the way he's thinking he about it. He can change the wrapping of his ice cream's in. It's a fundamental flaw is how he's thinking about it. Succession plan. What's the plan for this business? Well, we've got a lot of growth ahead of us. We want to have, you know, one, two doors at the freezer in the in Coles or Woolies That's and ambitious. be able to push it. We want to be a genuinely like a great Australian food company and I want to be able to export our products and just give everyone a better choice. It's amazing from professional rugby to business, but you're very passionate about it, aren't you? I am, yeah. Ed, you should be proud. Many people have an idea of going, wouldn't it be good to have nice ice cream? You've actually done it and you've got it in supermarkets and you've got sales. So bloody well done. Thank you. You know, labelling and things, you'll learn, you'll get better, all of that. It's an incredibly crowded marketplace. Every single ice cream supplier right now has a no added sugar product. Um, but sales are great. Uh, for me, though, the market's too crowded. I'm out. No worries. Thank you very much. I like you and I like what you've done. Frankly, eating ice cream's not bad, but actually, Fighting with the retailers, that whole frozen space in a fridge, just not me. So uh, I wish you well, but I'm out. Thank you, Andrew. Cheers. Ed, for a bloke who's come from rugby, your, your business acumen is really tremendous. What are so you congratulations. <laughs> Actually, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. it's pretty rough. What does <laughs> no, that I mean? mean well, for a bloke who's no, come I from rugby, he said no, himself he didn't learn business on the field. <laughs> He learned team sport. He's a rugby playing Queenslander who's good at business. He didn't learn return on investment there's, and all that. There's plenty assets. of rugby playing Queenslanders that are good at business. Ed, congratulations on your business, but I'm out. Thank you, Naomi. I'll offer you uh, 250,000 bucks for 20%. Okay. Well, I'm gonna match the guy on the far end. 250K for 20%. Wow, you have two offers on All the right. table. Right. All right, so we have Steve at 20%, Glenn at 20%. So, Ed, you came in looking for 10% at 250. That valued your business at 2.5 million. Just to remind you, the valuation you've now got is 1.25 million. Just putting that out there. And it's realistic. It's a, it's a good valuation for where he's looking to be in the next 18 months. I'm just I letting, think. making sure he's thinking about it because, you know, he's got the lights on him and, you know, We're looking after we you, want to keep him focused. Ed sells high-protein, low-sugar ice cream. He has two offers on the table, one from Glenn, the other from Steve. But they want to take a big bite out of his valuation. Look, I am I am stuck a little bit on the valuation. Halving it is, uh, is something I, I probably would not be prepared to What about we double the value of your businesses in the next couple of years and it won't matter, will it? I understand 100%. Would you entertain either of you to let me buy back 10% equity within 12 months at today's valuation. I'd entertain that. Wouldn't be today's valuation. It'd be today's valuation plus a cost of money at the very least. I'm not giving you free money for 12 months, that's for sure. No, no, I understand. You'd yeah. have some form of interest rate applied to it. And that'd probably start with a two and it'd be double digits. <laughs> um, Loan shark. <laughs> The reason you're going to buy that back row is you're doing well. Yeah, no, so I'm sacrificing. Yeah, yeah. I'm sacrificing an upside for maybe 20%. Ed, you've asked the wrong question, in my opinion. What about what is each of them going to do for the other 80% or 90% of your business? How is it going to help you grow? Surely that's the question you should be asking. But you're selling a piece of your company. Don't you want to know would, a bit would, about I who's working with you? I would ask one question of both. So, uh, Glenn, um, what would you see our company doing in the next? 18 months. Quite simply, my job, Ed, is to support your journey. Part of my concern is playing with the sort of people you're playing with. They can have a brain check overnight and cut you. So yeah. there is a high degree of risk to your plan. So we need to de-risk that by getting more major customers to support your plan. Quite simply, 250 for 20% is where I have to stay because I know the execution risk is huge. To go less than 20% just means it's going to be another investment over here that I'll lose interest in, and if I lose interest in it, I'll lose interest in you. But your board meetings will be long. It's OK. <laughs> I'm With fun. Queenslanders, there's no Hopefully, need yeah. to talk fast. He does like to talk, our Glenn. <laughs> So, um, well, for me, I, I loved your goal about what, what you mentioned about being that supplier of food in Australia. I thought that was, that was quite powerful in, in your talk for me, to be honest. Um, I think you've got to know your investor. Glenn is involved in that space. We have a shared investment in that space. That also makes us know how flaming hard it is talking to those big 
uh, people who used to have the stranglehold on the retail space. You know, it's no easy road, as, as you know, I imagine. I'm, I'm pretty stuck on, on, on the 20%. If you did want to buy back, I've I, I revised my thought if you wanted to buy back 10%. And so that would allow you to buy back uh, $125,000 uh, equivalent value. But I'd need to get 300,000 bucks for the 125. Huge. So if you want to buy back 10% from me, it's going to cost you 300 grand. It's going to be an expensive option. It'd be similar to the value of today's deal, though, wouldn't it? Because that'd be about uh, three million bucks. So that, that ten percent, yeah, it, it will effectively be valued at three million bucks. Yeah. So look, that's what, yeah, that's what I was trying to regulate is that the fact that we believe we have this growth without having to really. Well, if your company's going to be worth ten million dollars in two years' time, that's still a good deal, right? Yeah, I understand. Ed, get focused on the value of the business we're going to create, and don't get focused on the percent sure. you own. Yes. Yes. I, I I really would love to do a deal. Uh, you know, I came here too. Uh, do you mind if I take one minute just to clear no, my head? Just don't let thing? the ice cream melt, OK? We've no, got to get this done. All right, we'll put the lid on. Ed, can, before you go, I know this space more than anyone sure. on this panel. Um, you don't know what you don't know yet, but yeah. what I do know is there's a lot you're not doing right right now. Yeah, sure. I put holes all through your pitch, so you do need the expertise. You need it. OK, off you go. Cheers. There's a lot wrong. There's a lot wrong. He doesn't focus right on the customer. He doesn't. Yeah, you're out. You're out. <laughs> All right, do a deal. Good luck to you. I don't think how you can start. You want to already buy back half the equity you've sold. There's something it's not three right. Three times the number. We're not, we're not doing it for free here. I'm saying his psyche about wanting to get you half out before you've even started doesn't feel right to me. Did you call someone? No, I didn't, know. Uh, you called yourself? Yeah, basically. Oh, good on you, so you didn't call <laughs> anyone. Gentle reflection. <laughs> Actually, reflection. it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we have two offers. Steve at 20%, Glenn at 20%. So, Ed, what are you going to do? Uh, look, um... Look, um, Steve, thank you very much for your offer. However, um, I'd like to accept your offer. Hey. Here we go. Yay. Good on you, Ed. Looking forward to it, mate. Yes, mate. Yeah. Sure, well, we are. Nice to meet you. Good. Sorry to put you under pressure, but you. No, no, not at all. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely hey, to meet you. Like, yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> oh. He's a big unit, isn't he? He's a big unit. He's done well. Premium space. The fact he's got a deal with yeah. players means he knows how to sell it. It does. And the product is good. Yeah.